want you to know today that this is the set time for what God has spoken over your life. Oh, God had to get us to a place, Brother Albert, when we would realize that it was not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the Lord God. What I love about God that he separates the darkness from the light. Brother Joseph, he separated some darkness in all of our light, all of our life that the light could produce what God needs the light to produce. And what is it producing? It's producing the abundance. The word good means to be. Isn't that powerful, son? That God said, let there be and there was. And word means to be, which means when God said, let there be, he said, let there be good in your life. Somebody say light comes to produce. God does something in Genesis, brother Albert. He says, let there be. And the reverberation and the echoing of the word of God now makes God honor his word. And he creates Adam, Pastor Carleen. And before he creates Adam, he creates by the power of light. And he said, let there be every yield bearing seed. Whenever there is light in your life, you can't help but be productive. Glory to God. So what does the darkness come to do? The darkness comes to stop you producing that which is good. Somebody said, but I got a covenant with light. Just look at your neighbor and say, I have a covenant with light. And my covenant with life means that God is going to continue to keep producing good in my, in our life. And so what the adversary wants to do, he wants us to take hold of darkness. And the only way he can make us to take hold of darkness, guess what he has to do? He has to put dark people in our path. But look at what David said in Psalm 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. Like righteousness is like. He leads me in the path of righteousness before his name's sake. Now we have to understand we are not called to be separated. Glory to God in our family from those that are still going through the metamorphosis transition from light to darkness but what David does he lets us know that before God puts us in the midst of dark people he makes sure that we realize that we are light first because once we realize who we are and that's why he said let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus look at here what happens it says that Jesus was baptized in the Jordan and a dove came and a voice spoke from heaven this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and his soul was restored he knew who he was in the father and straightway he was led to be tempted by darkness but once we realize that we are light we sit in a dark place and let our light so shine and there is no shadow of turning elder freeman don't you know why we get anxiety attacks because we keep forgetting we are light david goes on to tell us the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. But he said, thou anointest my head with oil. God is letting us know that there's a restoration of the soul of man. There's a restoration of the countenance of man. And yes, we got to sit among evil people, but yet we don't have to act like evil people. 
because he restores my soul. Yes, we have to sit in the midst of naysayers, but he restored my soul. Yes, glory to God, Brother Albert. People might not like you some days. I'm not saying I heard anything. I'm just saying. But yet he's already restored my soul before he set me in the presence of some people. Somebody say, he set me before he set me in the presence of him. The path of light becomes a path, Deacon Harwick, that God inwardly leads us down because he spoke, let there be light. And then everything that light is supposed to produce and same thing with us. God wants to restore us back to the place that he intended. We look at the earth, we call it the Garden of Eden. We look at heaven, we call it glory. But in the midst of this earthly tabernacle, light is producing all of the benefits that come along with the kingdom. We're almost done. And so what light begins to do, it peers through the dark places of the soul of man because when he came he came to give us light in our soul and so pastor james every time our mind begins to get twisted or we don't begin to understand what god is doing in this season he has the word that he spoke let there be and it starts unfolding that even the ignorant and the simple might be able to understand because mentally there are some things that we just can't get our hands around. I don't understand it. Am I right about it? And when we don't understand, we begin to misappropriate faults, intentions, motives, and even how we think and feel about people. But because he said, let there be, and the word is always unfolding, and so we have to be patient enough <laughs> that God right after Adam's sin could have sent Jesus right on the scene but yet he holds the unfolding and the unveiling of the plan of salvation 40 and 2 generations what I'm saying there is some things in your life that God wants you to realize it's a set time for it and the set time is not our time and then we look back over our life and say, God, you spoke that then. But he said, I had to wait till you was prepared for when. Not W-H-E-N, but W-I-N. Because there's some things I can't do in your life till you start thinking like a winner. Until you start thinking like a winner. David's called the champion of God because he thought like a Jesus is the son of God because he thought like a it can look defeated but you don't have to think defeated hallelujah say God held some stuff in my life until I start thinking like a winner could you imagine how absolutely positively God thought after the earth he created in Genesis 1 and then chapter verse 2 says and the earth was without form and void and darkness covered the face of the deep he absolutely positively knew that he could conquer darkness how many times we have erratically done things and stepped out of line because we didn't think like a winner to God a winning attitude is in our heart the Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he and God is saying now I'm unfolding some things in your life David because I needed you to progressively have a winning attitude because winners produce winners leaders produce leaders Fact to matter. They come out of Egypt, right? After all the miracles God has done, and now he leads them in the path. He's a pillar by day and a cloud by night. Glory to God. 
But if we don't think like winners, because he's a winner, he's the king of king and lord of lords. Y'all still with me? He leads us in a path of triumphant victory. He never said that we wouldn't have to go through. But he leads us, Pastor James. How can we be led by the king of all kings and don't have a victorious mindset as we're going through the battle? And this is not thinking in relativity or positive thinking. This is not philosophy. This is scripture. This is fact to matter. That whenever God leads us into anything, he expects us to think we're coming out with victory. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, say, this light affliction is but for a moment. Because the let there be good time means that he is perpetually producing good in our life. How many people know that good comes along with a crown? And crown means victory. The unfolding of the word of God. The same let there be in Genesis is the same in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and nothing was created that was not created by him. For in him, amen, was the light of the world and the light of man. So he put goodness inside of man. Jesus came to make sure we unequivocally understood that in our good nature we produce good things in the spirit realm. Glory to God. And the only reason that we're not seeing the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, David said he had fainted. Elder Ashley, the only reason we are not seeing the productivity of the goodness that is in us is because we stop reading the good. We come to church on Sunday, but we stop reading the seed of his word. He told Joshua, and the book of this law shall not depart out of them, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and then you will find good success. Not talking about business because we've taken the seed of God's word and we just made it into a monetary thing. Ask Job. He'll tell you something different. Job will tell you, I was the most righteous man in all of the land of Uz, but God afflicted me, glory to God. And then God gave me double because I made sure that the goodness of the Lord did not depart. The attitude of gratitude and the attitude of winning with God, glory to God, comes in understanding the un folding of the seed of God in your life. And he gave every yield-bearing seed. Every yield-bearing seed. Can you just say every yield-bearing seed? Every yield-bearing seed. Every yield-bearing seed. Glory to God. So, if I think with temperance, guess what? You ought to start thinking with some temperance. If I think with patience, you ought to start thinking with patience. If I think with forbearance, you ought to think with forbearance. If, if I think with a winning and God can, we can do all things through Christ, that you... <coughs> Because he's giving us every. Because he said, let there be light. And it's good. And light keeps producing. Somebody say, nothing grows without light. So God separates the light from the darkness. And this is why I will never get upset over people when they fall because what I understand is that they had a good part inside of them. Y'all didn't get that. Because God's just separating the light from the darkness. 
in their life. And if your intentions and motives was right, guess what? You got the good part. And it produced. And it produced after its own kind. The church is getting ready to be so powerful. Glory to God. So powerful. Somebody say, so powerful. Because we're getting ready to see the bountifulness of what good produces. Glory to God. Good means cheerful. It means joyful. And it means bountiful. That's what good means. So in the inherent nature of God being light and God being good, he becomes a self-sufficient God inside the heart of the believer because he gives us light in one inherent power. Then he gives us good in multiplicity and bountifulness. And this is why Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly because my inherent nature of life cannot do anything but produce bountifulness. I know I'm being very rudimentary. I know y'all knew this already. So, so just walking with Jesus means there is a bountifulness that is repetitively and perpetually taking place in our life. So to the intercessors last week, that's why God said, don't ever say you can't no more. I'm short of patience these days. You're cursing yourself because good means bountifulness. Light causes stuff to produce. So Jesus is saying, I am light, which causes production, productivity. I'm good, which means bountifulness. So I am constantly supplying your supply. But every time we say we're short on something, glory to God, the Spirit's trying to stir up the bountifulness of everything that you are. I just can't with that person no more. But I'm causing germination, which means unfolding. But the good part about this is, Elder Carlene, you know what's so wonderful about it? That when the day comes, the set time, God will do in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, because all of this bountifulness has been stored up inside of you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Elder Cubbage, isn't God so good that he don't treat us like the children of Israel when they begin to store the, mag the manna up and maggots and worms begin to attack it? Don't you know that God just lets this stuff build up into mentally, spiritually, and cognitively? He can unveil the goodness and the bounty of the Lord in your life. And next thing you know, you're like David. David, you are running through troops, leaping over walls, and seeing the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Where did this nation come from? Look at your neighbor and say, that's getting ready to be our testimony. Isn't it crazy how God makes sure that all the glory belongs to him? You mean, God, you allowed me to unmask all of this, and all I can do is wait to be made? <laughs> if Bible is correct, right? Jesus, and it is, thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> help me preach, Pastor Lucy, help me preach, baby. If and, and it is, so I don't have to ask that again, right? Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, right? Adam is the first Jesus who was trapped in the mind of the Redeemer because he's omniscient. He knows all things at all times. So Adam was a thought before Satan was ever created. And so Adam comes to an awakening one day and says, all of this was created for me before God ever made.
me. And so when God separates the light from the darkness, he makes sure he lets us know that I made the man. The man did not make stuff. God said some stuff was broke just for you today. That you can come to the liberty from which Christ Jesus has called you into. Mine to be steadfast and unmovable. To always be abounding in the work of the Lord. Preacher, prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist, intercessor, prayer warrior, whatever you are in the house of God. Hallelujah, I hear the Holy Ghost say, things have been broke just for you today. And God is gathering. And God is gathering. And God is gathering, and God is gathering, and God is gathering, and God is gathering. By the power of his Holy Spirit, God is gathering as a hen. He's gathering us to himself. Glory to God. Don't you thank him? Don't you praise him today? That he made a time that we could hear his voice and that our hearts would not be hardened. We thank you, Father. We thank you. For he told us in Genesis that God would divide the light from darkness. That he's bringing us from our dark days. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless him. We bless him, we bless him, we bless him. Come on, come on, come on. He told us already this week we wouldn't have church as usual. The children, the children, they say, hey, be a part of your thoughts.